looking to see if everything worked. Nope. Not everything. Hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Can't. Sorry. I just, uh, trying another automation thing did not work. Anyway. Hey, Tree Lobsters, good to see you. Um, the uh, bit of advice to neurotypical people, if you ever feel like you can tell somebody with ADHD to solve their problems by setting alarms, don't, it won't work. And I can tell you that because of personal experience, because of the whole like, yeah, 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 I'll be there right, just let me finish this one thing and I'll be right there. And, and, and I'll, and I'll, yeah, the alarm went off and I'll, and I'll get to it. Just, just give me one second. That is why this is starting 24 minutes late because I thought, oh, I need to do one more thing to my bot. Yes, my, my, my timer went off. It's time to sit down and, and start the stream. But no, I, I just do this one thing. No. And I didn't bring water in, but I do have tea. I don't know how many days I can complain that I'm having a bad brain day or just don't feel put together today before I just might as well just say, this is status quo. And I'll tell you instead if I'm feeling great. I don't know. I mean, I'm not like depressed or, or anything. I'm just... I'm still struggling to catch up on some stuff so I can get my head clear for my novel edit. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, people are saying hi and I'm not being polite. The kids are asleep. It's here. Um, Thunder Pope is here. Hello. Glad to see folks. I was playing around with some Tom Cardi sounds. And so I... Um, I'm curious if they'll work. So this will have one small swear word in it, but just, uh, Oh, that was the wrong, that was the wrong thing, but wow, that was bad. Okay. Hey, Whimsical Sage, we will not encourage you to look at the screen then. Hello, CPO Parker. Yeah, I'm trying to, um, that was supposed to come up when someone follows to add people to the space robot dinosaur list, but that did not work, did it? Hmm. Okay. This is weird. Okay. Um, sorry. I thought I had something fixed. But did I test it? Of course not. Oh boy. Okay. Um, let me just edit this thing. See, this is this is what's gonna happen. Okay, it's got the right thing in there, but it instead oh crap. Anyway, anyway, how are folks doing? I'm doing okay. I've got, um, I worked, I skipped the stream Tuesday to catch up on work and I skipped doing anything yesterday. I worked until like 7.30 trying to get stuff going. I think, um, at least for the next couple of months, I'm going to be going to one episode a week and that's for podcasting, not streaming, um, because I can't keep up with the production at the production at the level I want to do, which I'm doing more production now because I'm getting better show notes, more detailed show notes, um, doing some SEO crap and, uh, doing transcriptions, all of which I feel very strongly about. And I'm doing it for the Libsyn post, my blog post, Substack and Patreon. Um, it's a lot of work. And I was five episodes behind and time was still passing. So I needed to keep recording episodes. So I just really got way overwhelmed. 
Um, so I'm going to go to one episode a week. It'll be Thursdays. I don't know what I'm going to do on Tuesdays. Hopefully something fun. Maybe even co-writing, talking about writing, but not putting it on the podcast. I don't know. Planning's hard for me. I hate to admit it, but it is true. So, um, that's going to change. Oh, that's where I went wrong. Okay, got it. Found it. <sighs> Sorry. I'll get it. I'll get it. I worked so hard trying to get this to work, so... Here we go. Gotta try this one more time. Take a hit and Pluto knows what Pluto is and Pluto knows that Pluto's hot shit. Pluto, Pluto knows that yeah, it doesn't come across real well. It's much funnier in context. But I'm keeping the space robot dinosaurs one. And that's what happens if somebody follows. Let's see if it'll work if I just test it. Space yep, it does. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Anyway, despite my kvetching, I do have a podcast planned. And these things, I will admit, I made these things on Canva. And I just put everything I need to remember about the stream at any point. I'm trying to remember every single thing. And uh, it's helping. It's helping me keep up. I just haven't filled in number 14 yet. So this is Ye Olde Convention Talk. I do this every couple of years um, at convention season just to remind people of various etiquette things. And, you know, the more I know, the better it is. And, um, and now it can be edited for COVID or in, in improved or, or added to. Yes, added to because of COVID. But anyway, um, if you get your questions about the, um, about conventions, put them in the chat and I will answer them. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna hit the add button now. So I don't have to uh, worry about it in 30 minutes. And I'm going to see if that happens. And so I'm not going to do anything interesting. An ad's going to play. And that way, when new people come in and they're not subscribers, they won't get hit with an ad. They'll be able to jump right in and join us. So I'm going to hit the BRB screen. We're going to do an ad. And then we'll be back. If the button works. If somebody could tell me if the button works, I'd appreciate it. Okay, my says there's a my side says there's an ad. Nope. No, Ian, we were uh, trying to get the ad taken care of first thing so then other people coming in won't get an ad. I guess that backfired. Tell me if you can see this now because we were doing it just so we wouldn't get interrupted before the show actually started. You can see me. Okay, cool. Yes, I did just play an ad. I wanted to know if Ian got an ad and then got another ad. You were okay, cool. Okay. Um so yeah, we'll get started. Hmm. 
I should be writing season 20, episode 14. Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is a podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. I used to be a wannabe fiction writer, and now I am a fiction writer with imposter syndrome. So, in this show, I talk about various things that uh, writers come up against and give them a little bit of craft advice, a little bit of emotional advice. I'm not a therapist, and um, I just try to support people. That's what it's all about. I actually listened to somebody today talk about frustrations in trying to create a podcast and the time and money they'd sunk into it to really make this high-produced, excellent thing and how people aren't paying attention. And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, I've got, I do the same thing. I do this because I love it. I do this because I know I'm supporting the people that I, that do listen. Um, but yeah, that, that whole, the magic of getting a bigger audience, I don't even know. I keep telling myself I should just stop caring and just make content the way I used to. But I don't think I ever can. You can't stop caring about something. It's just not. You you stop what you do about it, but you can't really just turn off, turn that switch off because life would be so much easier if we could just turn that switch off. I currently am going through my list of things that are on fire to put the fires out so I can uh, start working on novel edits. Uh, the novel is going to slip, unfortunately, um, because there's no way I can edit it and get a, get a final draft that they'll be confident in because I'm probably get some more con- comments back when I turn this one in, this draft in, um, and be ready for a December release. So it's going into spring 2025. I'm not happy, but there's nothing I can do about it. So, um, I think, so I've been doing a lot of podcast production, catching up on escape pod work and, um, yeah, turning the sound off on my phone with the incorrect finger. Um, and I've got, it's a, it's a very travel heavy spring. My next couple of trips are weekend only. If you are in the Baltimore, D.C., that area of, that metropolitan area, I will be guest of honor at the Savage Geek Fest, which is in uh, the Savage Mills Mall, I think. It's uh, sponsored by the game store Omnihedral, and they've invited me to go be a guest of honor in their, the, the Geek Fest that they're holding in the mall. And so that'll be early May. So if you're in that area, come on by. Should be fun. I'm waiting with bated breath to get my taxes. I always put money aside to, um, to pay the taxes. I put 33% of everything I make aside and it sucks, but I, I, sometimes I'm still, sometimes the math still doesn't work out. And I'm like, why, why, why? But I don't understand investment math, not investment math, tax math, or investment math. But that's a long way of saying I still prefer to have money in the bank ready to pay the taxes. If you are a freelancer or making any sort of writing money and you're not an employee somewhere, put money aside for taxes. You may think you need the money now and next week you will be much better off financially and will be able to pay the taxes. But next week or next month or next year you will be very unhappy if they're hit with the tax bill that you have not prepared for. Trust me. Kids are asleep has an accounting meeting tomorrow, indeed. And Space Valkyries just did their taxes yesterday. Hello, Space Valkyries. Good to see you. But what I wanted to talk about today is what I called ye olde convention prep. I don't know why I said ye olde. I guess it's because it is a topic I come, I I do, 
I used to do it every year and then pandemic and lockdown came. And so I didn't need to tell anybody to prepare for conventions because there weren't that many. Um, but now I think a lot more people are comfortable going to conventions. And um, so I wanted to bring it up again. So uh, we actually started with a question. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm looking for it. Ah, yes. Uh, Keto DD. Sorry if I am putting the emphasis on the wrong letters there. Asks, what would be the top three conventions you'd recommend attending? This is a hard question because it depends on where you are in the world. I can only speak to United States and I'm probably speaking mostly to the East Coast because I usually don't go further than the East Coast unless someone else is paying for it. Um, unless it's the nebulous. But anyway, for a, and also where you are in your career. For a beginning writer, I recommend um, Boscone, which is in Boston, in February. It's a convention that has, um, Boston is, is close enough to New York to where a lot of New York people, agents and editors come. And it's a really good place to meet people. Worldcon is a little bit of a hit and miss. Um, I've really gotten a lot out of the Worldcons I've gone to. And the caveat is I am a straight white female. And uh, I know people who are not straight white females um, or straight white males that have not had the best experience at Worldcon. That said, Worldcon is put on by a different group every year. So I'm not saying that's run by one big racist homophobic group. I'm just saying that a lot of people have come across various things that have not made them feel welcome in the community. So I tried to help make people welcome in the community, but um, I do know that I've, I've experienced something that's uh, easier than a lot of people. So um, just mentioning that. Um, I've heard Wiscon is good. It is meant to be a feminist science fiction convention. I've never gone, but it's had some racial problems uh, in the past couple of, or maybe years before pandemic. But um, so I can't I can't recommend Wiscon because I've never been, but. Um, I don't know about World Fantasy. World Fantasy and, and Worldcon are expensive conventions. They are considered to be professional and um, everybody has to pay unless you are one of the guests of honor. So I'm, I'm going to be a panelist at Worldcon this year, but I'm paying just like everybody else is. Um, and I'm paying to fly to Glasgow to do it. But if you want to meet agents and editors and just network and get your face out there and have them remember, oh, that was the cool person I met at that convention. Um, those are two good places to go. Before the pandemic, I loved attending. Uh, why can't I think of it? Oh, my God. Uh, so many places make a pun on convention that I'm all confusion there. God. Oh. Confusion, which is in Novi, Michigan, Detroit, you know, it's close. And um, that one used to be really great because there are a lot of really good authors that live in uh, middle America and they that's their hometown convention. John Scalzi always goes. Cameron Hurley frequently goes. Tobias Bakel usually goes. So um, that became a really neat convention for a lot of uh, writers to go to just to talk to other writers. And they even, and again, this is before. I have not been since the pandemic was over, but, or the lockdown, etc. Um, 
they would even they started putting on a day early, like the Thursday of the they they added a day to the convention that was Thursday that was just for the professionals arriving to kind of talk about things they're interested in and then um the the con for the fans start on Friday and that was really cool. Um but yeah, I I'd say but it depends on where you're from. So the first thing you want to do, especially if you don't go to conventions very often, is look close by. Just just Google your your um Google your area and science fiction conventions. Um, and you can see write-ups. You can look and see who the guests are. Um, there's a weird thing about North Carolina conventions. They don't like me. And they don't like a lot of the other authors I know who live in the area. Kwame Mbala, Richard Dansky, uh, other people whose names I forget. Ursula Vernon, Natanya Barron. Um, so it, it's kind of weird for me because I don't, local cons just don't, I mean, did I say something about them? I usually don't talk bad about anybody. I don't know. But anyway, start there. If there is a long standing con, like a lot of cons have been going for decades, or yeah, they'll be they'll be good to go to because they've sustained so much because enough they get enough good uh, guests to really bring people in and like Bubonicon, there's a large author um, a large author group in New Mexico um, Daniel Abraham Diana Rowland. Uh, George Martin, and that's their hometown con. So you go to Bubonicon, and you'll th those people are there, and they'll bring in more people. So uh, check locally if you have the uh, oh, you're in South Central U.S., Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, I just was the guest of honor at FenCon in Dallas. In February and that was a really nice time they they put on a good good con it was small you could tell they were, they were working to I mean like we all are I suppose working to recover um, but the attendees were really into it and um, they had some great other uh, guests like Maurice brought us and um, they had Lisa Snellings who's a artists that I've loved for, for a very long time. And so look, look close to you. There are a lot of good ones in, um, Texas. There's also Armadillo Con, which I don't know. Um, I haven't been, but I know a lot of people who work on it or have gone. So I would say check that one out as well. The Kids Are Asleep says San Antonio Book Fest. Okay, cool. So, um, <laughs> so Ludwig says, I love Boston, but going th to Boston from New Jersey means driving through Connecticut, which is death. You're right, because my kid goes to school in Boston. And when we drive them up to go to back to school, like when there's actual moving in stuff, like lots of stuff to bring. We drive up and uh, Connecticut's terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, so yeah, that, that's how to choose one. If you're, if you can afford it, um, going to something like a world con or world fantasy con this year, world con is in Glasgow. It's in uh, Seattle next year. And world fantasy con is in, um, Niagara Falls, I believe New York. Ni there's two Niagara Falls. There's there's one on the U.S. side and one on the Canadian side. I think it's New York, U.S. Um, this year. And I'm thinking about going. Hey, Gamergram. Good to see you. 
And Space Valkyrie says, I want to go try to go try to go to Seattle Worldcon next year. Yes. Um, I'm excited about that because there are also a lot of good writers in Seattle that I'll be very excited to see. There'll be uh, Sherry Priest is there. Um, uh, Travis Baldry's not in Seattle, but he's in Spokane and hopefully would, would come across the state to attend. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Seattle one as well. But yeah, the, if you can go to a World Fantasy or a World Con, that's good. Comic Cons, that's... I don't know. I have trouble deciding with Comic Cons because it's for comic books and anime and video games. Oh, and writing. And the couple of times I have gone professionally, I've gotten... It, it's been kind of weird. It's the, the am, am I being... It, I can't say I was being ignored, but you you know when you're just a person in trying to look professional, signing books, and there's 14 cosplayers about 10 feet away from you, you know you're not the focus. <laughs> but and and for actually no, if you're going to network, the comic cons are definitely not the place to go. Because while there may be a lot of professional people who go there, there's nowhere to relax. And where all of the cool stuff that happens as you're a growing writer, where all that happens is the bar and the restaurants. So the weird, the convention, comic book conventions are so huge, they're in convention centers. And so at the end of the day, everyone leaves the convention center. And then they go wherever they're staying. So there's no one area that people are hanging out that you know you can go and meet an agent or an editor who is doing BarCon. So for that reason, I'd say keep doing, focus on the science fiction and fantasy. Or, you know, if you're, there are mystery conventions as well. I've never been to one. I can't endorse them, but I do know they exist. So hopefully they're a lot like SF conventions with how you can network with people. So, and Dragon Con, also huge. Dragon Con was fun, but it's, it's, it got too big for me. I think the last time it was 2010 and it was too big for me there. And I'm like, I don't think I can, I can't even imagine what it is now, 14 years later. My computer just made a noise and I don't know why. This computer never makes noises. Oh, well. Whatever. So, uh, you can go, so look, look locally and that's a good thing to, um, start. Sorry, I just got distracted. It's a good way to start your, um, understanding how cons are. The very first con I went to was a tiny little con in High Point because they had some, uh, they had two stars from Babylon 5 there. And that was the first time I ever wanted to go to a convention. I'm like, oh my God, Babylon 5 stars and they're just down the road. We have to go. And uh, I remember almost nothing from it except for the fact that it was a convention and I really wanted to go. I am slightly irritated because I'm hearing an incoming ad break is coming and that's why I ran an ad earlier so that wouldn't happen. I've heard that's what you do. You you run the ad early so you don't get surprised by one. But apparently it didn't work so we're getting an ad. And I'll go BRB. Is there an ad? Did the ad happen? Because it told me an ad's incoming, but not telling me there's an ad. I don't understand. No ad yet. Okay, I guess it was just trying to scare me. Thank you for giving me something else I need to edit out of the podcast. Really appreciate that, Twitch. Anyway, sorry about that. Distraction? Um... So what you, uh, 
So now it says there's an ad. I don't know. All right, it says we're back. I'm gonna believe it. Um, just to get, catch up on chat. Um, I don't know if I said hi to Gamer Gramp. Did I say hi to Gamer Gramp? Um, can I get a shout out for Gamer Gramp? I think. Oh, and shout out for Space Valkyries too. My uh, auto events have been reduced to like two people, so I'm sorry I did not get auto shout outs for you. Um, but good to see you, Gamergramp, and, uh, everybody else who's shown up. To Ludwig, Ludwig, Ian. That's oddly delayed for me. Twitch is weird. Yes. Now, Gamergramp is great because, uh, he plays for a while. And then he usually ends around the time that uh, the kids are asleep starts. So you can just watch Gamer Gramp and then just raid into the kids are asleep and keep watching awesome content. And if you have free time in the afternoon, you should watch Space Valkyries. Did I spell it right? Anyway. When it comes to what you wear, you know, I, I, I'm not the kind of person to give fashion advice. I am still t-shirt, hoodie, and jeans person. But um, some people want to, some people like dressing up and feel it's their armor. If you know the person who writes as Gail Carriger outside of her Gail Carriger persona, um, she's very different. She, you know, puts on her very fancy steampunky clothes and, uh, you know, goes to a salon and gets her hair done and to look that amazing at the conventions. And that's her author persona. And it's not that it's not real. It's just not how she usually is. Me, if I step out of this, what I'm wearing, and put on something fancier, I feel exposed for some reason. I can't. I can't explain it. I just get really anxious and exposed. And every once in a while I will, you know, I'll dress up for nerd prom. I'll dress up for Hugo night. But overall, it's like even just trying to look more professional, I feel like I'm going to trip and fall. I, I, I'm going to be shown to be a kid clomping around in mommy's shoes. I don't know. I'm 50. This should not be happening right now. But I will say, you know, when you go be, remember you are a professional. This is what you're going to the convention to be. You're going there for fun. You're going to see friends. It's going to be great, but you are professional. And so remember that part as well. If you, you can cosplay. Um, it's not my thing. I've never, I guess, again, putting on someone else's clothes to be somebody else fills me with anxiety for some reason, but also I've never been really a, a costumer type person. Um, unfortunately. But yeah, a lot of people do uh, cosplay. But regardless, just... If you're going to cosplay something that's a little risque, I would recommend not networking while you do it. If, like, you network one evening and 
when you're dressed as you and the next day you put on something, you cosplay with some uh, zing to it. And, you know, the person recognizes you and says, hi, don't run away. But, you know, remember that you are there to be professional. So, yeah. The, um, and this always feels obvious, but I have to say it every year, just like code of conduct shouldn't need to be there, but it does need to be there. Um, be respectful. If you drink and you overindulge, don't go talking to agents and editors. If, uh, you don't have to drink. This is something I think a lot of people stress about and they absolutely should not. I know that people who don't drink have gotten crap for not drinking for whatever or, or interrogated. Yeah. What? Are you an alcoholic? How, how, how can you ask somebody that? I don't understand. But there's, uh, you know, I've never seen anyone blink when someone orders something non-alcoholic at the bar. And if someone wants to buy you a drink, say, great, I'll have... And then just say whatever non-alcoholic uh, drink you want. A lot of smaller cons actually are creating mocktails that are themed for the convention. So you can even order a fancier drink without alcohol. So... Um, you know, if you don't drink, please don't let that stop you from mingling at the bar and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you, if you overindulge and I'm not, I'm not judging you if you do, I, I certainly have done so at a con. Um, don't make that the night that you're going to go talk to that agent, you know, you wanted to introduce yourself to. Um, There are the horror stories about what people have done to get the attention of editors and agents. A lot of them have to do with going into, like, following people into the bathrooms where they know they're vulnerable or stuck. I don't know if there's a problem anymore, but even if an editor or an agent is interested in what you're working on, don't have a hard copy. Nobody wants to carry around several pounds of paper when they're traveling. Hopefully that doesn't happen so much anymore with how easy it is for, to have digital files, but just in case. Um, when it comes to talking to them, first, um, I, I don't, I have not been diagnosed with social anxiety. I can often fake my way through being confident in personal experiences, but other times I'll be the one walking away going, oh my God, what did I say? Did I offend them? Should I have said more? Should I have said less? I do that a lot. But when you're going to go talk to somebody, either an agent, an editor, or an author you really like, don't talk yourself out of it. Because they are there to meet people like you. They're also there to support whatever authors they might be representing there. They might be there to be on panels. But hiding from new writers is not what they're doing. So if you're there to talk to people and network, go in with a plan. So you know they're probably eventually going to ask you what you're, if you get a converse, get in a conversation with them, they're going to ask you what you're working on. So have a short elevator pitch, very short. You can do comp type, you know, comp titles. You can say it's The Stand Meets Goodnight Moon. That might be cool. Anyway, um, and do not, Put it down 
in any way, shape, or form. I am telling you, and if you think, is she talking to me? Yes. Don't put it down. Don't say, I'm working on this, but it's not ready. I'm working on this, but I'm not done yet. You say, I am working on this awesome book. And that's it. I'm just letting that sink in because I know nobody wants to be that person who's, who's really super confident. But if you listen to the Wale Talabi interview that uh, would be the one before this episode, um, not a lot of people showed up for the live show, but that was a diff different time than I usually stream. You'll know what a confident writer sounds like. He was such a joy to talk to. Just the way he talked about his work was just so refreshing. And yes, ha have, losing self-deprecation is difficult. It really is. Especially because a lot of people don't like people who are confident. And you've probably been told to stop talking about yourself. Or you're worried someone will tell you to stop talking about yourself. But this is a place where you're supposed to talk about yourself. So go in with a plan of what you're going to say when they ask you what you're working on. Also, ask them what their authors are coming out with, what they're excited about. Ask them, um, I'm sorry, I have a tickle in my throat, it's not going away. <clears throat> Ask them what they've seen at the con that they've enjoyed. Ask them if they've seen the new hot SF movie that's out. Just show interest in them and what they do, not just what they can do for you. And this is pretty much advice on being socially non-awkward in the first place. But, you know, going in to say, just talk to them like they're people. It's harder now since the implosion of Twitter, but if you follow anybody, any of these uh, agents or editors on social media, any social media, and, you know, prepare before you go. Go and, and watch some of their videos, and you'll see that, you know, this person seems to really enjoy or... Um, retweets the wrong word. I don't know what people are saying for other platforms anyway, but sharing, sharing, that's the word. If they're sharing cooking videos or dog videos or cat videos, you'll get a sense of what they like. And then you can talk about that. Or you can even say, I was looking at your Instagram and I saw you posted this. That was really cool. That's all you got to do, you know? And don't take up too much of their time. But if they're enjoying talking to you, don't feel like you have to run away. I felt bad when I was talking to Dongwon Song at Confusion a couple of years ago because I had an agent and uh, I felt like I was blocking <laughs> Dongwon from talking to possible authors. And Dongwon reminded me that we were friends and... I was allowed to talk to him, even though, uh, excuse me, uh, them, they were working. So that was nice. But, you know, don't feel like you have to run away unless the person looks like, okay, thanks. I need to go talk to this person now, or I need to go to the bathroom. Don't follow me and give me your manuscript kind of thing. I'm going to check to catch up with chat. There's a Greek philosophy that says never put yourself down. Not sure which school it is, though. Stoicism? I don't know, but it's a good rule. It's a really good rule. Uh, Tulubig says, confidence is a subtle thing. In IT, I have to sound like I know exactly what I'm doing in any scenario, even if I don't know what the hell is going on. And remember, being confident in your skills is very different from having an ego about yourself. Yeah, exactly. There are, um... My mind just 
blitzed out for a second. I'm sorry. I hate ADHD. Really, really do. Right. I wrote one of the first nonfiction books in podcasting. Um, I, re I wrote it with Rob Walsh, who works at uh, Libsyn right now. And when I was writing, I was trying to present my argument in the way of, I did this and I did it wrong. So let me tell you how you should do it. And my editor told me to cut that stuff out because it didn't make me feel like, it didn't make me look like, you know, an expert. And I'm like, well, I'm an expert because I tried all these things and failed and I learned what didn't work. But she wanted a little bit more smooth delivery of advice that has nothing to do with anything negative ever. And that wasn't even self-deprecation. It was just trying to tell people, you may want to do X, but I can tell you it won't work. Or it didn't work for me. So don't put yourself down. Go in with an idea of what you're working on. Don't lie. I know I said don't put yourself down, but if they ask you if your book is ready to submit and it is not, say no. Say you've got a, you know, your goal is to have it done by X date. But don't say yes and go home and hurry to finish it and send them crap. That's not a good idea. And don't lie about anything, really. It's not, not a good look. Yeah, Gamer Gramp, here's a mistake I made and learned from. What's wrong with that? I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else. Don't... Don't try to just connect with um, people who are ahead of you in career-wise. Because meeting authors that are your peers is one of the best things you can do when you're um, coming up. It's, you know, I, I think I'm still in touch with a couple of people I was at Viable Paradise with in 2005. Oh my God. Excuse me, I have to feel old for a second. So I'm, um, but, but finding the people who, you know, they're not going to say, I can't relate to you because I just got my fifth New York Times bestseller is, is good because they'll understand exactly what you're going through right now. And publishing changes so fast. It's hard to find somebody. It's hard to relate to somebody if they've got a weird problem that you can't even comprehend because you didn't have it. Uh, Gamer Gramp says, I'm 52. We're not old. We're well seasoned. Indeed. Still, it's been 20 years since I, almost 20, 19 years since I went to um, that workshop. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the way, way my career's gone. John Chu also benefited from that. And, and we were, we had a really good group that year. Now, Under Pope is yelling at us to get off his lawn because he's older than we are. Sometimes young authors become successful authors. Most big name authors were new authors in the past. True. But my point was that John Scalzi does not have to worry about how many followers he has on any social media platform. Because he never had to do that at the beginning of his career. While that is very important to people right now, because if you can sell your book, which I can't say, I'm not saying you won't sell your book without a big following, but eventually when it comes to marketing your book, they're going to ask you. And so getting a larger following is a good thing. How you do it? I don't know. 
I'm still trying to work it out. But just saying that that when John Scalzi was new, the problems that we have or new our authors have now were not problems. Social media is way stressful. And the industry is pinching the mid-list and sustaining a career is getting harder and harder. Yeah, good times. Uh, Skipford says, nice to be in my mid-40s and not the oldest in chat. Yes, yes. I remember there's some people on Twitch who are just like, don't tell me your age. I realize, oh, you mean under 18, don't you? <laughs> I don't think they're going to kick me out for being 50. But uh, yeah. Uh, to Ludwig is, I'm 30 now. When I was a teenager, I sent her an email asking for advice about being taken seriously as a writer, and she took the time to write a long, thought-out response. Oh, that's awesome! I'm so... Thank you for, for mentioning that, and, and I'm really glad that was... That was that worked for you. I'm really glad that I, I... I try to take letters seriously. I mean, when I was... When I was a kid, I sent snail mail to a couple of authors and heard back from one. So... It's, uh, I'm glad that, 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 that resonated with you. Um, hey, IntelliGame, good to see you. It's so frustrating trying to play the algorithm game. I hear you. Yeah, it really is. I'm, I was just watching before, uh, I came online. There was a YouTube, YouTube for podcasters seminar I was watching and, I was dismayed to see, they have some new tools that I need to look at, but I had already done um, a lot of what they were suggesting and have been doing so for years, and I still get almost no traction on YouTube, so I'm, I'm getting a little dismayed at that. Thank you for the subscription, IntelliGame. I appreciate that. I haven't pushed the yay button in so long. Thank you. Yes, we heard the news. It's not publishing news, but it is, uh, yes. Yay, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, I need to fix all of my auto shout outs now. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, wait, it did. Just took a second. Great. Um, does being a nerd on Twitch count as having a social media presence? I think you might need to have a large following. And I don't know how to do that. So, um, I mean, yes, it's a presence. <laughs> um, it, it is a presence, but... Uh, it's, it's, yeah, I, I don't brag about my Twitch streaming to my publishers unless I did a, do a Twitch event for the launch of Station Eternity. So that was, um, that was fun. Did not get a lot of traction either then, but it was still a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, CPO Parker. I also, one of the few things I actually do, um, I did prepare for is when I was doing that yay uh, animation, I also made a Christmas yay animation. So I'm ready for the holidays. I'm ready with Santa and everything. Um, I'm not sure how much a Twitch present counts to publishers. You know, you... I don't know either. I don't think they know. Um... I really don't. But I think having any sort of presence is is good. I think, you know, the fact that you've been doing it for so long and you've got a pretty solid community will make a difference. Um, so, yeah, are there any... Um, are there any other questions about conventions I can get to? I'm trying to think of the ones that come up. Most of the ones are, how do I talk to people when I'm shy? And what if I don't drink? And what if I can't? Oh, yes. I was going to update because of COVID. So two things. One is a lot of 
some conventions are still requiring masking. Um, some do not. If they don't, and you, what whatever side of the fence you're on, if you're talking to someone else who is either, who is not like you, you know, respect what they need or what they want. And if you, if you're, if you're masking and they're not, and you don't feel safe, then yeah, don't talk to them. Let's just put public health number one. But if you feel okay, not masking and they mask, it's not even, it doesn't need to be brought up, you know, um, I, yeah, it just, just be polite and, and, uh, kind. The other thing is when I, I feel bad for the people who've been fighting for accessibility because they've been told time and time again that it's too much, uh, too much work or too much money to have a virtual con alongside the regular convention. And then lockdown came and then suddenly, hey, we can do a virtual con now. And, um, yay, it happened, but boo that it took a freaking global pandemic to make it happen. But the good news is a lot of people are continuing the virtual aspect of conventions. So if you can't go for whatever reason, um... Give, see if they have a virtual con. They may still ask for money. And here's why. It's still going to take a lot of tech. And probably, it's probably all going to be volunteer. But it's going to take a lot of tech and a lot of monitoring discords or Zoom or whatever they have. However they're presenting the content. There's still going to be a lot of work and equipment going on. So if you wonder why you're paying for a virtual con, that's why. But if you can't go, hopefully the con will have a virtual element. They may not stream every panel. Um, a couple of the cons I've been to have like a virtual section where you just, you're, it's a panel that's meant just for people who are watching online. Now, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. Has anybody done that? Has anybody attended a virtual con and, and had that? Um, because on one hand, it's like, I want to see what everybody there is seeing. On the other hand, your questions may get lost in the actual real life crowd that's there. If you want to ask questions to the panel. So I don't know. I can see it either way, but that is a way to deal with it. And sometimes places have really good, um, mingling areas. For some reason, I feel much more awkward mingling on Zoom um, than in real life, but some places have done that. There was a software called Gather, I think, that seemed to be really good, and we used it um, for escape artist meetings. And you had a little avatar, and you saw everybody else, but you couldn't... When you got close to people then their audio would appear to you. You don't just see everybody talking at once. And then if you if you all sit down at a table, then you're all talking to each other and anybody outside that table can't hear. It was a really interesting way of, of gathering. And I don't think it caught, caught on, which is sad. Um... Let's see. Uh, Space Valkyrie says, My one anxiety about trying to do cons is masking, not getting con crud or COVID. Is it other people not masking? Yes. Um, I have not I have not had a problem with anybody bu bugging me about masking. Um, again, I may just be lucky. But, you know, I masked uh, a lot of times on the boat. I, I hoped more people on the Joko cruise would mask. But... Anybody who did mask, I don't think they got crap for it. So, um, you know, it was, and I didn't get sick. And I don't think anybody in my, 
personal group got sick. Um, you know what? I think, I think my plan is to just say, if somebody gives me crap, just to say, well, well, I'm sick and I don't want to pass it on to you. I may be lying. I don't care. Oh, it's a ad break again. See, they don't, they don't warn me about the second one. So I'm going to go BRB for a moment. And we should be back. Uh oh. Crap. Sorry, I just got an email that I need to address. Look, more fires. Yay. Um, catching up on the chat, there's discussion about virtual cons and uh, physical cons. Intelligame says, I like virtual cons, but in my experience, digital always gets kind of forgotten when run alongside physical. So in that case, it would be good for, for digital, the digital part to have its own sort of side um, convention that's only focused on it. I went to NorwestCon a few weeks ago, missed the first half of the panel. Opening ceremonies was also half cut off. That's unfortunate. Intelligame says, I personally feel like running virtual and in-person as two separate self-contained events is the best call. Digital could say, have a viewing party for portions of in-person, but organizers should put things together as if both groups are unique and need their own attention and focuses. That's a good point. Gamergramp says, I could see VR trying to leverage virtual con attendance soon. That would be interesting. I don't think anybody's able to been keeping like put up a VR option that doesn't make people either be sick or frankly look like a jerk. I would probably say a harsher word, but I don't tend to swear on this show. Um, ah, I'm almost never behind in chat. Wow. Gamergrant went to a four-day gaming convention last month where with people touching game pieces and such. And my wife and I got back without getting any type of concrete. I think, generally speaking, people are a bit more careful these days than before 2020. Yes. Pretty much. It was, um, there were, it, it, on the boat, there were hand-washing challenges. The boat was split up into the red team and the gold team. And, uh, you were supposed to do a hash mark every time you washed your hands at that specific sink and they wanted to see who was more sanitary, despite the fact that you might have just used the hand sanitizer that was right next to it. <laughs> or you could just lie, but anyway, that was their way of trying to get people to wash their hands. But I know that there haven't that I've heard of. There haven't been a lot of spreading events at conventions. Granted, I don't know who's reporting it anymore. We went to Discon in 20... Is that 2021, Space Valkyries? December 2021? That sounds right. Anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, Discon in 2021... Um, did very careful con contact tracing. Like every day we would get an email about who got sick, when they tested, and who they were around. And 
they did that for like about 10 days after the con and then they just stopped saying that if anybody got sick now it's not from us only they said it more politely um and i'm not i'm not getting that many updates from conventions anymore but the ones that are doing it i still appreciate because i still don't want to get sick i still don't want to get long covid in, in, in fact it's not it's not the the virus itself that bothers me anymore it's the long covid risk so um but if you are comfortable going out you know you can and you can also say you know i'm not you can also avoid shaking hands you can do elbow bumps um you know it's it's do what you're comfortable with don't feel like you have to expose yourself needlessly if you're not comfortable um COVID is still the third leading cause of death. Oh, so many bad words I want to say. Wait, no? That's old data. Okay, kids are asleep on the data. We shall, we, we'll wait. Yeah, ro vaccine rollout was fairly new. Or first booster, I don't know. Anyway, um, does anybody else have any convention questions for me? I am delighted, um... Oh, that's a good idea in telegame. If you can, try organizing with others who are COVID conscious is helpful too. You know, also, this is, of course, dodgy depending on where you are and what time, what the time of year is. But one of the big reasons I think we did not get sick at Discon was we didn't eat inside. And if we ate inside, we did it in our rooms. So, but they were having a warm snap in mid-December in D.C., so, like, all the restaurants had outdoor seating. And we were able to enjoy eating with other people outside. And when everybody started reporting they were sick, they all said, I ate in this restaurant or I ate in this, in the indoor uh, hotel restaurant or whatever. So, um, I was big fan of, of outdoor seating and food. What am I most excited about for my next con? My next con will be Savage Mills in uh, Savage, Maryland. And I am very excited. It's actually run by some friends of mine. And I'm always happy to see them. And they have a game store there called Omnihedral. And I just found out that I'm going to be running Brindlewood Bay, which I'm pretty much wanting to do at all the cons I do now because I've done it. I did it at FenCon, I did it on the Joko Cruise, and now I'm doing it in Savage. Uh, the Savage Mills Mall, uh, Savage Geek Fest, excuse me. Oh. Sorry, the emails are still doing things. Um... But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do that. It's I think it's going to be their first con that they're working on. So happy to help do that. Um, Phil Plate will be there. He's um, the science guest of honor. And I haven't seen him in forever. So I'll be happy to see him. Oh, CPO Parker got COVID at PAX West. I'm so sorry. Did eat indoors, skipped it in Emerald City Comic Con for that year. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I actually do need to pay attention to these emails. I'm sorry for it to disrupt my stream, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I don't know uh, if I was going to do NASFIC in Buffalo, but I'm not sure about that now because of family stuff and monetary stuff, I may want to save my money for world fantasy. Um, but I have told them that I'm coming, so if I pull out, I should pull out soon, just to be polite. And then there's Glasgow, and I'm thrilled about that, not only be to visit Glasgow, but also a lot of streamers I know are going to be there. I get to meet Cypher of Tear, excited about that, and um, Stephen Joy's 
Um, and just, it sounds like it's going to be a fun con. And uh, Valerie and I got nominated for the Hugo. We are up for semi pro zine for a skate pod. So I'll get to dress up for nerd prom again. Yes, Phil is the bad astronomer. Yes, I forgot about that. Oh, cool, CPO Parker. That's awesome. Valerie, I have no idea what that emote is. Should I widen the... You're staking for a second week to vacation. A lot of people are. I'm uh, not sure what we'll be doing. Um. Oh, weird. Okay, so Valerie, I have two windows open. One for my bot and one for my streaming software. And your icon is different in each window. So that's weird. I think the, the dancing head was what you wanted. The thing I can't identify was the weird thing. Thank you. I'm, I'm We were thrilled. There are two relative newcomers to the ballot this year. There's uh, Correjo. Did I say that right? And uh, Giganotosaurus. And... Um, I've known LaShawn for a long time and I'm just absolutely thrilled that they made, that Giganotosaurus made the, uh, ballot this year. Uh, renting a car to drive to Stonehenge. Very cool. But yeah, and then we come back and there will be, um, I'm guest of honor at Bubonicon and... Ursula, Vernon, and Kevin Sonny are the Toastmasters at Bubonicon, so I love traveling with Ursula. I like riding along in the wake of her force of nature waves. We met uh, Mari Naomi, a cartoonist, on Joko Cruise, and we kind of all, that, that those are our main people we hung out with, um, Mari and, and their spouse, and um, Mari does uh, autobiographical cartoons. So so they sent me and Ursula the uh, the first page, which was them just writing that they, they met us early and it... Ursula was drawn with her hands in her pockets and a big cowboy hat on going, um, clitoral births and hog farm ponds, or I can't remember exactly what it was, and I'm drawn over there in the corner going, I wish my plus one would stop talking about hyena genitals. And I can't disagree that that's what, that those things happened. They, they did. So, yeah. So anyway, Bubonicon, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, in August. I'll be guest of honor. Alongside TJ Clune, which I'm a little little intimidated to be me aside those bestsellers, but uh, I will try to put on my confidence pants and be brave. Yeah, yeah. Ursula likes obscure animal facts. The more disturbing, the better. I'm not self-deprecating. I mean, I'm, I'm honest. It's, it's true. It's, it's just they're bigger authors than I am, but I'm not saying they're better or, or that I'm bad. Just, you know, you just wonder sometimes how they come up with their guests of honor, uh, 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 invitees. Confidence pants. Hey, Veronica. Welcome. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Because I need to go back to everybody's favorite thing, editing soon. But I'm happy to talk about conventions forever because I love conventions. I'm very glad to be at them again. And uh, I also know that I'm lucky that I have not um, brought anything nasty home thus far. My husband got COVID several weeks ago, like in January, I think. Yeah. Um, and, um, 
It was a couple of days after we went to a local board gaming convention. But we sat at a table with five other people, no, three other people, and gamed with them for hours. And my husband was the only person who got sick. So we're not sure what happened. And we were mostly masked, except around the people we were around, you know, I, I guess our loose bubble, you might say. Um, but we were mostly basking, but I, we don't know where he got sick because nobody else in on that table got sick. And I live with him, so I don't know. I do have another question, says Intelligame. Do you have a goal convention, one you still want to get the invite to or get Est of Honor spot, something like that? Huh. I don't know. I think any time I'm invited as a guest of honor is great because I don't have to pay for anything. Um, I want to be invited back on the Joko cruise, and I don't think that's going to happen because I think they like to cycle authors in and out. But, you know, the, the guests on 2025 are people that I've been huge fans of and possibly would embarrass myself horribly if I did meet them. But I've been kind of, would love to be invited back. My joke was that I would come home and then build up a, a, a Twitch following on the level of that bronze girl. And then they would invite me back as a streamer, not a writer. And so then I could sneak under the radar that way. Not that I've been trying to increase my audience size actively for the last four years. But I was going to do it in the next couple of months. Because I have to do it soon because they have to notice me and then invite me. I can't do it like give myself till next March. I just got to do more TTRPGs. Um, Worldcon MC? Oh my lord, I would not touch that. Okay, if they invited me, I'd be really, really honored, but that's terrifying. It's it's just, it's really hard to MC because there's so many things you can get wrong. So many things. It's terrifying. Actually, Space Valkyries, my, uh, my solo RPGs are not getting a lot of interest. And I don't care because I love playing the solo RPGs, but I'm wondering if I need to work on my presentation but i'm having fun with them but yeah the 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 solo are the more ttrpgs i'm not sure we'll do it it's mostly a joke it's hard to grow a following for anything on twitch but also i just want more ttrpgs in general well intel game in the past couple of years we've had people mispronouncing names of uh nominees We've had a nervous laughter be misconstrued as in laughing at someone who was a nominee. We've had them begging the audience to just stay silent whenever they gave, away, gave out six no award announcements when... The sad puppies tried to take over. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrifying. It's like, I'm comfortable on stage and I'm comfortable talking in front of people. But that is a minefield. I mean, I had to give out the Nebula for a uh, short story last year at, yeah, last year. And, um, I'll just be awkward white person. There were three non-Anglo names on that ballot and I try, they're like, oh no, all you have to say is the nominees are and then we'll list them and, and the, we'll have a recording, someone reading them out. I'm like, yeah, but what if someone wins? <laughs> if, if, if one of those people wins that I can't pronounce, then I have to say their name. And uh, I, I drilled myself for a while before the awards and um when i got on stage i still was terrified i'd screw something up so 
that is, yeah. I mean, when George Martin was the MC in 2020, he didn't even bother to pronounce Faya right. But it did gave, give way to one of the funnier shirts. I always meant to get that shirt. Um, yeah, that was really funny. That the shirt's like fire, as in fire. It's just fire. Because he, he, it's like he almost worked hard to mispronounce that. I remember that about them getting fire wrong, yeah. So yeah, it's a little terrifying to be the MC of the Hugos. Yeah, I'm not competent yet. No. Uh, DM Jazzy Hands is playing uh, Legends of Zelda Majora's Mask. That's a that's a blast from the past. I think we will go ahead and um, raid into him, but I'll do my exit strategy talk. Um, thank you for coming out and hanging out with me, and thank you for listening if you're listening later. This is I Should Be Writing. My name is Mer Lafferty, and you can find my blog and show notes online at merverse.com. On most socials, I'm Mighty Mer. I'm most active on Twitch, and I'm trying to get more active on Instagram. It's hard. I don't take a lot of pictures, so... And I take even less video. <laughs> For some reason, that's the one I want to get active on. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I have, I have science fiction books out, and you can find them at most places books are sold in the U.S. or English-speaking territories. And um, with uh, Valerie Valdez and the rest of our team, I am up for the, or rather, our magazine, Escape Pod, is up for the Hugo for Best Semi-Prozine. If you are a World Science Fiction member and think about voting, consider us. And um, we're going to raid into DM Jazzy Hands, but... I want you guys to remember that no matter what we're talking about with how difficult it is to network or the middle is getting squeezed or AI looming down on us, you do it because you love it. So you should be writing. Just, you know, writing and not being sick of your sick at your stomach about all the crap I just said. All right, we have raided DM Jazzy Hands before, but in case you're new, DM Jazzy Hands is a fun, uh, very fun streamer. Will be louder and more sweary than I am. Uh, you can do the raid call as Mighty Mur. No, that's something else. Mur raid, hashtag Mur raid, and uh, my yay emotes or just a friendly hi emote. And uh, we'll go say hi to Jazzy. Um, I'm hoping to be back on Monday, but like I said, I'm going to be doing, I should be writing streams only on Thursdays now and other days of the week maybe I'll just chill out just chatting do some gaming I don't know but I think I need a break from two shows a week so I'll see you next time thanks guys <laughs>